It is an exciting day here on my channel because we are going to be building a single launch surface base to Elu. Here it is partially finished in the vehicle assembly building but we can just fast forward to the launch now. And we are off! Look at it go! So um, we have quite a lot of boosters to lift this monstrosity into the air because it is a big, big, big payload. So we have those side boosters running out of fuel almost immediately. These, um, This is a, an asparagus setup meaning that the tanks uh, drain in sequence and get detached in pairs just because it's the most efficient way of designing rockets. There's a great article on the wiki if you want to learn more about how asparagus works. But here we are just ascending. This video is going to be played in uh, fast forwarded speed <laughs> because it would be very long otherwise. So we are just ascending through the upper atmosphere. I'm not actually eyeballing this. You can see those instruments in the top of the screen. Those are the mod Kerbal Engineer Redux which you can download by googling. And here we are ascending. So where are we going exactly? Well, the short answer is Elu. Uh, the long answer is Elu, a dwarf planet that was first introduced to Kerbal Space Program in version 0.18.2, added as a Christmas gift for the KSP community. It is the seventh planet in the system and is usually the furthest planet from the sun. I say usually because some of the time its orbit intersects jewels, uh, passing in front of it for a minority of its orbital period. But worry not, the two planets are locked in a 3-2 resonance which coupled with their different inclinations ensures that they cannot collide. But anyway, there's our apoapsis going to the top of its orbit. You can see that engine configuration I've got there is uh, five vectors, just to add us a bit more power and a bit more control in terms of gimbal. And there go the fairings, and you can see the payload in all its glory underneath. So obviously this is going to be a single launch base, but uh, we are going to have to do a bit of reassembling in orbit, just because it had to be folded up, for want of a better term, just so it could fit into that fairing without having the fairing be ridiculously wide. But here we are just raising our periapsis uh, above the atmosphere, and we are now in a stable orbit, so we can begin reconstruction. I would recommend reconstructing this thing whilst you're in low curb in orbit just because if you find any errors it's much easier to then just restart the mission rather than discovering that. When you're in orbit around Elu, so we can just start by um, reattaching these landing boosters to a better configuration. So um, not much more to say about this really other than just let the footage do all the talking but you can use H and N to go forwards and backwards or and I, J, K and L as um, Oh, to move it from side to side in the similar layout to WASD. And there we are attaching it, and you can see here in a minute, uh, we've got this wobble of death, and then the Kraken gets, gets us. I left this in just to show you how to uh, avoid this, so if we just quick load our save using F9, uh, we can uh, attempt this again. So what you want to do, as soon as you get it docked there, uh, immediately disable SAS. It's the SAS freaking out that's what causes those death wobbles. <laughs> There's probably a better term out there, but... Uh... Yeah, I've kind of already done videos like this where I reassemble things in orbit. You can see my jewel station uh, for another example. I've also done other things like reassembling surface bases in orbit. So uh, I think we can show these things in relatively abridged presentation. You see I've kind of got these detachable monopropellant tanks and we can just control from the docking port that we're uh, controlling <laughs> and set the target docking port as our target. Uh, I feel like this is not particularly useful information I'm conveying now, but here we are just gradually taking our approach. The key to docking is just taking your time, really. So we just docked the solar panel array there. Elu's relatively large distance from the sun reduces solar power to approximately 4% at Elu periapsis and 1.4% at Elu apoapsis of the value seen at Kerbin. So it's really important to bring lots and lots of panels or even an alternative power source like the RTGs, which I've also got in this space station tucked away in that service bay that we're docking now. The contents of this service bay are also meant to show hydroponics gardens. Um, obviously this is an entirely stock space base so there are no hydroponics parts in stock KSP so I kind of used the uh, medium reaction wheels because they're green and that's the only reason because they're green <laughs> but here I confess I made a mistake um, have you noticed it yet see whilst I've whilst I remembered to add the monopropellant tanks to this module I forgot to add actual RCS thrusters uh, to it so I couldn't dock it. So I came up with the ingenious solution of instead docking the entire base to the module, which I'm sure is what NASA would do if faced with a similar situation. But um, it actually worked pretty well. 
because those docking ports have magnets in them so once you kind of get close enough if you just sort of play around with the SES you can sort of force it to dock and there we go I kind of couldn't believe how quickly how easily I managed to do that I thought it would take ages or I thought I'd even have to revert the flight but um, it didn't so it was fine anyway the last module is just a ore refinery and mining bit so it's also got a few more science experiments and a drill, so we can just dock that on. And there we are, fully assembled. Make sure you enable auto strut. That's how I was able to launch this large cargo uh, hold, by the way, without many struts. Auto strut, you just right click components in the vehicle assembly building, or even when you're in orbit, and you can, and it basically stops the wobble. They're essentially just struts, but are invisible, but it's great when you're assembling space stations and things because you can essentially strut things after they've been constructed in, in the stock game, which is phenomenal. Obviously, this is a single launch base, though, so the auto struts are still present here, but if I was doing more than one launch, it would be incredibly useful. But anyway, we are getting sidetracked here. We're going to make a manoeuvre node now. I'd actually already set up the game so I would be at the right phase angle, roughly. I, I didn't really spend that much time. You can see that's the kind of angle... Uh, from Kerbin to the Sun to Elu. That's probably not the exact phase angle, but that's that's what a phase angle is. I thought that diagram would be a good visual representation of it. So obviously it's an inclined orbit. So we're going to make one manoeuvre and then a second manoeuvre to get our inclination set up. So we can just bring that down and get a rough encounter with a bit of playing around, which we can just skip through because it was quite a while. Uh, we can get an encounter that looks pretty nice. So there is actually a third manoeuvre node of that apoapsis there, but uh, spoiler alert, we never actually need to use uh, that burn there. Well, I mean, I te guess we technically do, because oh, yeah, we just need to turn the gimbal down on those engines there. Uh, using the last of the fuel from our ascent booster, uh, we can just detach that and fire up the nuclear engines. And now we're going to be playing the video at 12 times uh, post-production speeding up, just because nuclear engines are very low thrust to weight ratio, but they really come into their own when it comes to being efficient. And we're going to do more than one burn at periapsis just because we want to really maximize what's called the O-Birth effect whereby burning at periapsis is far more efficient. But um, as I'm sure you may have guessed from the fact we managed to use some of the ascent booster to start this burn, this mission was wildly over-engineered. The reason was, this is being, if you follow me on Twitter you probably know this story, but uh, uh, I didn't have this video ready in time so I was just rushing through it and so I just plopped on way too much fuel. And here we overshot the maneuver node because I was busy writing a tweet. Because in real time, that maneuver, that maneuver took a while, so I was sitting there tweeting and realised I'd overshot. So don't tweet and fly, kids, is the moral of this story. But it turned out alright, actually, because now we've got a pretty good encounter uh, with Elu. If we just play around with our normal and anti-normal, we can just mess around and get uh, with radio in, radial out. Just playing around with the maneuver notes, really, not doing anything special. We can get our encounter with Elu, so we can just uh, time accelerate over and overshoot, obviously, like I just did. Do a quick burn, playing this at 12 times time acceleration again, just to get our inclination corrected. And there we have it. So again, not perfect execution of a manoeuvre node, but uh, I like to have the attitude on this a channel that anyone could replicate this video. And I'm trying to show that it doesn't actually take that much precision and mathematical accuracy to pull off these kind of things. You can play, you can pretty much brute force it and just keep quick saving, quick loading, or just like do what I do and just slap on way too many tanks. But yeah, I kind of got a bit distracted when I was telling that story. It was on Friday night. I hadn't got my K the KSP video I wanted to upload today finished at all. It was Expedition Eve Part 6, which is still... Is it Part 6 or Part 5? I think it's Part 6. Um, so I just kind of slapped on. I realised I had way too much fuel, but at this point I really couldn't be bothered to um, reduce the number of fuel tanks for the sake of having a more efficient rocket and making it look like I planned this more. Because in actual fact, I just slapped on loads and loads of fuel and I thought, ah, that will... I've definitely got enough, that's all that matters. Anyway, we can begin our massive burn to circularize the Tilu. Similar way to Moho, where it doesn't take much to get there, but then circularizing takes a while because you're actually having to force your periapsis up, or in the case of Moho, force your apoapsis down so you're in the same orbit as Elu. Or Moho, if we're still using that example. <laughs> So here we are, yeah, just detaching those auxiliary tanks, and we've got the little tab open there, so we can see how much fuel we've got. And as you can see, we have a lot of fuel left. We probably, we actually have enough to even get back to Kerman if we wanted to, but we don't want to. We want to land, so I didn't even bother in the end sticking with the whole trying to circularize. I'm actually on a crash course already, which is great because now when we detach 
the uh, engine stage, it's just going to crash straight into the ground and it's not going to be left in orbit. Even though earlier when we were assembling this around Kerbin, we were leaving lots of debris in orbit. But I've shown you in the past how I've built things and then put little probe cores on the detached parts just so we don't leave debris. So if you are OCD, you can go ahead and just add all those stuff. Again, see my Jewel 5 single launch space station, but there we are just detaching our nuclear engines but yeah like I was saying you can just terminate them in the uh, tracking center and it will destroy them so there's no need to be um, re quote unquote realistic about it unless you want to but here we are just uh, descending whilst we're descending down to Wheeler we can detach those auxiliary monopropellant tanks and here we are just preparing to touch down and as you can see I managed to do this first time first try I didn't even need to quick load or quick save once and slowly bring it down and there we go and it was at this point I noticed I'd somehow managed to put a fuel tank on that cupola module and so rather than restart the mission I just thought I'd just destroy it with some surgical whacker kerbal I don't think it's really cheating because this mission is technically finished now but for the sake of having a nice looking base I mean, it's basically like a Kerbal just going at it with a hammer and chiseling it off. So I feel like it's acceptable to use the cheats menu in this instance. So, and I'm being very open with it, right? So, um, yes, what are we doing now? We're, um, deta <laughs> I wasn't even looking at the screen. So we're just going to go ahead and just destroy the uh, landing modules now because they do look a bit ugly and we like the base looking nice. That's why I kind of build all my surface bases in orbit and land them as one big piece because I don't like having sort of, most surface bases people make are assembled using rovers and they drive them all together and those bases end up just looking like a gi giant, like, like a train, I forgot the word then, like a big train and there are wheels visible and I, I just like it looking a little bit cleaner, like, a, like an arctic base where it's just a building on stilts with no, nothing else. But here we are, just putting our Kerbal on EVA and just activating everything so we can check our hydroponics garden uh, there we go so yep those green reaction wheels and we've also got our uh, thermoelectric generators because I like I said earlier power is a real issue when you're talking about ELU because it's so far away from the Sun it's very hard to rely on just solar panels and there we are um, extending our solar array which I think ended up looking pretty nice actually and we can see all our modules annotated there so we have our habitation thing there are four kerbals there are four little uh, passenger bays there to represent their rooms. We've got a nice science tower, observation deck, um, communications arrays, all that good stuff. And that's pretty much it for this video. So other than me saying goodbye, um, it's time to cue the music. <laughs>